Okay, in this worked example, I'm going to talk you through doing one step of an in-body calculation. Now, this is a sort of calculation that's actually far better done by computer. It's really fiddly, um, repetitive, boring, sort of things that computers do well and humans do badly. But let's just take you through one step just to make sure you understand what it is the computer is doing. You can look at the computer code to see if the easy way to do it. So let's imagine we've got our n bodies. In this case, we've just got two bodies. We've got body A with this mass and that velocity, and body B with this mass and this velocity. And the velocity here is straight in the minus y direction. Here are the coordinates I've chosen. I've decided the origin will be the position of A to begin with. And here I've broken up the velocity into its two components. So 10 kilometers per second in the y and 5 kilometers per second in the minus x direction. So let's see where these things are going to move. So for object B, it's, uh, we'll, we'll have a time step delta t of 100 seconds. Uh, you normally pick the time step to be as long as you can get away with. If you make it too long, the whole calculation becomes inaccurate because you're trying to approximate some true curvy motion with a whole bunch of straight lines, and that won't give you a very good answer if the lines are too long. But the shorter you make the time step, the more calculation steps you have to do, and the slower it all is. So it's a compromise between those two. Anyway, let's use 100 seconds here. So let's take object B, its visual position. Um, is x is 10 to the 10, y is 5 by 10 to the 9, z, which will be out of the screen here, is nothing. And now we can ask what's its position after time delta t. Now the uh, final position is just going to be the starting position plus delta t times the velocity. So it'll be 10 to the 10 in x minus 100 delta t times the velocity, which is 5,000 meters per second. In y, it's starting position. In this case, it's plus, because it's moving in the plus y direction, plus time step 100 times 10 kilometers per second, 10,000 meters per second, and still nothing in Z. And you can do something similarly for A. In this case, its initial position will be 0, 0, 0. Its final position will be 0 and X. The X isn't changing, and the Y will be 0 minus 100 times 20,000. OK, so that's our position at the end of a time step. And now we need to work out what our velocity is. And to do this, we need to work out the force. So there's going to be a gravitational force on object B due to gravity object A and on A due to B. Let's work out the force here, the force on B due to A. Now that's going to, well, what we really actually what we care about is the acceleration. So the acceleration is G M1, that's mass of A, mass of B, all over r squared is the distance. That's the force, so to get the acceleration you divide by the mass of the object being accelerated, so it's just that. What is r? We can work out r using Pythagoras' theorem. So r squared equals 10 to the 10 squared plus 5 by 10 to the 9 squared, because this is a right angle triangle, you square this, add it to square that, and that gives you the square of this. And that actually comes out as so r, you take the square root of both sides here, comes out as 1.12 by 10 to the 10 meters. So we calculate the acceleration using this, which comes out as 0.53 meters per second squared. So the initial velocity in x is minus 5,000 and in y is 
10,000, 0 and Z. Final velocity is going to be minus 5,000 minus acceleration. Oh, we need to work out the components of the acceleration. This is the acceleration in this direction. What we need to work out is a component to the acceleration here. That will be a x and the component of the acceleration there, a y. Now, it turns out there's a sneaky trick to do this. You could do it using trigonometry. But if you look at the equation, the uh, triangle total acceleration, a x, a y, and the triangle, where this is r, and that's the x position, and that's the y position, you see they're similar triangles. So what that means is that the ratio of this side to this side is the same as the ratio of this side to that side. So for example, a y over a is going to be the same as y over r. And a x over a is going to be the same as x over r. So what that means is the acceleration in the y direction is going to be equal to the um, so a y is going to be total acceleration times y over r. Total acceleration is 0.53 meters per second squared times y, which is 5 by 10 to the 9 over r, which is 1.12 times 10 to the 10. And similarly, you can work out ax. And what you then do is the final velocity will simply be the initial velocity, in this case minus the time step 100, times this, whatever the value of ax is that you calculate from this. Now it turns out ay comes out as 0.237 meters per second squared, and ax is a times x position over r, which is 0 0.53 times 10 to the 10, over 1.12 by 10 to the 10, which comes out as 0 0.473 meters per second squared. That should be per second squared up there. So the final here is 5, 000, minus 5,000 minus 100 times 0.473 and in y it's plus 10,000 minus 100 times 0.237 and still nothing in z. So that's given us where b will be one time step later here somewhere, and its new velocity, which will be the same as its solved velocity, but with a bit of a force in that direction, so it'll be something like that. Do the same calculation for this, it'll move down to here, but then you've got to add the effect of the acceleration, so its new velocity will be something like that. This plus that will give something like this. So what you'll see is this thing will keep moving like this, and this one move off like that somewhere. And that's how you do n-body calculations.